We are going to start off by planing our boards down for a general thickness. We're just trying to get a uniform thickness here. And I cut the boards down to length pretty much. This one I cut into thirds, the others I cut into half. And the, the edges that we're going to glue up here, I'm just needing to get my straight edge. So really what I have here is just a flush trim bit and a, a smooth edge here, a straight edge. And I'm just running this over the router table here just to get that clean edge. This one I'm doing uh, both sides of this because I am gluing this up as you see this one's in thirds. The others I just glued uh, or I just trimmed up one side, the side that I'm gluing together. The other side I just kind of wanted to leave pretty rough. Now I'm just applying my glue here, my wood glue, and um, I'm going to get a little bit too much I get a little overzealous on this last one so I just use this and get both both sides so not just uh, one edge that you're gluing together but both edges that you're gluing together a little touch up there All I'm doing is just making sure that everything's straight, um, making sure that all my edges are going to match. And I'll throw on my final clamp here just for good measure. I'm only doing three clamps here. I've clamped things a lot more. Now to make the handles, I just start off, I'm going two inches in, and I did a four inch wide handle on this. Now I'm using a one and three eighths inch drill bit here and I'm just doing the outside of the handles and uh, you'll see here in a little bit what I'm going to be doing. I'm doing these at request so I'm just doing one side. You can do you know whatever you want both sides of the board one side whatever works for you. I do have a little helper here my son came and gave me a hand on this so he's Trying to do a little bit of uh, vacuuming as I'm as I'm going. So now I'm just marking my the edges from my circles here, and I am trying to be pretty pretty accurate just to keep things a little easier here. Going as close to the line but not over as I can. Just with my jigsaw, you can use a you know scroll saw or you know hand saw, whatever you have. I just have this jigsaw that I use whenever I can. Nice little transition there. You've, if you watch my videos before, I use this tool to um, work on my knives. Now I'm just doing a little cleanup here around the edges there just to make it a nice straight line for the handle. And the, this little drum kit here does leave some it will leave some edges here you can do this if you have a, an oscillating spindle sander which I do not but uh, they'll leave little grooves so I'm going to just kind of take a, a file here and clean up the just a straight edge and just clean that up a little bit just so when we do our round over on there it's not all bumpy And on one of the boards, I'm just doing a little, I don't know what you're going to call it, an inlay or, or whatever. So the corners, I, I measured this out. I didn't show it. I probably should have uh, recorded that. But I measured in, I think, two inches on each side. And I am, I put a little divot there because that's a lot easier to see a little divot than it is my markings. So you see I do it on one side. If you can get, if you've got a setup that you can do all four without having to move your board, it's going to be a little bit easier. I just did this. It was easy for me just to kind of take the clamp off and, um, or take it out of the vise and then just kind of run it along there. So I just did the long edges first 
And now I'm really just going to do the short edges pretty much to um, meet those long edges. And this is just a plunge router. Um, I, I think this is the best way to do this instead of trying to use the, the router table and, and hurt yourself or something. Now I'm just doing a round over on all of the edges here. As you see, I have a sacrificial block there. I'm using it on each pass just to make sure I don't have any tear out. It's not necessarily, um, I guess it's not necessary if you're going along the long end of the grain but when you're coming across the grain you'll tend to have some tear out and doesn't look good you'll have to kind of fix that up with your sanding and all that stuff so I use just use this little sacrificial block there make sure that uh, you're being safe when you do it I'm showing that off there so I just do this with all of the the boards that I have for this video um, it's just you know, the personal preference or, you know, whoever you're giving it to, their preference. If you do a round over or I've got one that I'm trying to figure out what uh, what kind of edge I want to put on it. I'm not sure yet, so I'm leaving that for now. Now here I am dropping this onto my router bit before I turn the router on. Don't try and drop this down onto a moving router. And now I just have a 80 grit, this is just from my um, oscillating sander, or my um, random orbit sander. Uh, you can probably use something that's a little cheaper, but I just have a wooden dowel that fits into that groove. And I'm just doing everything the same as I am with the, the rest of the board. So I start off with an 80 grit um, inside there. And I switch to a 100 or 110, and then I, f I finish with a 220. So, and here you're not putting any pressure on the sandpaper on the sander or anything. Really, just let the sander do all the work. I have it set. I think it the speed's like three out of six, so half speed on that. And that block wasn't doing any good. Now I am just doing a coat of tongue oil here. I've cut it with a, citru a citrus um, solvent. And I'll put some links in the description for the products that I use. I got this. Um, I'm going to give another shout out to the Wood Whisperer, Mark Spagnolo for the um, tip on the, the tongue oil. And I think he actually got the um, mixture, the tongue oil and the citrus oil from... A suggestion from somebody else and i um, not sure exactly where he got that but it uh, I think it went on really well it's a little bit thinner so it doesn't glob up as quickly when you're using that solvent like I said I'll put a description or a link to the products that I use in the description so I'm just putting on the first coat here and when you're using the tongue oil you put on one coat then you come back an hour later wipe it off I'm not showing all of those steps and then 12 hours later you can put on another coat I put on about three or four on on these boards kind of getting out of the camera camera shot aren't I And I really like the, the way that it brought out. This is unsteamed walnut that I'm using. So the, the color variations are pretty drastic. And I like the way that it brought out the, the grain on the, the lighter portions of that. And I did leave some kind of texture here on the bottom parts. Just I like the aesthetics of it. So put on the second coat here. Like I said, I didn't show it wiping off the the excess var uh, excess oil an hour later but just follow whatever you use if you're using like a salad bowl finish or you're using you know tongue oil or beeswax whatever you're doing just make sure you follow the instructions for whatever product you're using i really like the the way that this uh, this is the first project project that i have used um 
made my wife's charcuterie board with the tongue oil and I like that and so I'm using it on all of these. Now you see the top portions of all of these that I'm, these boards that I'm working on. I really like the way that it came out so I um, might probably do this on the next one or next few. And I did switch to a, a little sponge brush. My wife was working on our railings and she had some of these ex left over. I used up all the, the brushes that I had and I feel like it actually worked better than the shop towels that I was using before. And now this is the you know final coat and I'm just kinda, now I'm showing you how I wipe it off. It's nothing special. Flip it over and then just wipe off the, the excess. If you want to keep putting coats of oil on until it doesn't accept anymore. And there is the finished product. I just laid all four of them out. And those are the four that I was working on right now. So thanks for watching. And you can always go to thefightwithdepression.com and check us out there, see what we're up to. Thank you.